Now you're going to need several different tools during this installation. You're going to need a, basically a soldering gun, wire cutters, wire strippers, solder, soldering paste. You're also going to need shrink tubing to cover up the wires and everything to make this into a nice neat bundle. Other than that, just a general screwdriver should get you through most of your installation. Check your car disassembly instructions to see what else you'll need to get the car apart. Uh, alternately, you might need a multimeter to check your voltages and things like that. Besides that, you may need some parts. This is a part for a single high or double high installation, depending upon if you add a tray underneath for the single high and use the entire thing for a double high. Now, the other thing you're going to need is the wiring harness for your car. Like the mounting kit, it may come with your radio if they've asked you your make, model, and year of your car. Uh, if not, just search on the internet for your make, model, and year and the car stereo wiring harness. You should find it for under $10. Now, it clips directly into your car's existing harness with no modifications, and it's color-coded and should match the harness that comes with your new stereo. Uh, you just need to connect up the wires, which we'll cover later on in this video series. So now we're going to take a look at the unit we chose. I'm not endorsing any particular unit. This is the one we chose, but do your research, find which one you want to put in your car, what features you have, and the cost that you have for your car. Once you decide, this is a double high DVD. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and take a look at it. And that's the regular standard adapter. We're not going to use that. We're going to a special one. These are the connectors in the bag that includes the connector that, which isn't right for our card, so we're going to cut it off. And there's also video connectors, iPod connectors, all those things you were going to need during the installation. Uh, so we're going to put that off to the side. Now the unit itself also ships with usually the, these complex ones have their own remote control. So you can have that for your car. Uh, of course the passenger would use that. Now if we unpack the box you'll notice that there's, there's uh, connectors on the back and everything. We'll talk about those a little bit later. And this particular one also a DVD that has screws that lock the DVD in place so the mechanism doesn't get damaged for shipment. Eventually you're going to take those out at the end when you're ready to install. There's other connections in the back. There's the power, there's TV, some functions that don't, some functions and some don't. Depends upon what you have in your car. There's the power connectors there and some of your data connections. So we're going to go look at these again during the installation. So let's go ahead and uh, finish unpacking here. We're going to take the unit apart, take the bag off, and take a look at the, the particular features on this radio. Uh, remove those straps temporarily. Don't forget, we're going to take the screws out later. But we take the bag apart, and we see here we have our screen. It's got a film on it like usual. It's got all the buttons at the bottom. It's a pretty nice layout uh, that allows you to have touch screen capabilities and mechanical buttons to control some of your functions down there. You also have the microphone and an external 1394 interface. The rest of it's a standard double high DIN installation so it'll fit nicely in your car. So that's the first look at your stereo. You should familiarize yourself with your stereo system and read the instructions before you start the installation into your car.